All right, what's up guys? This is Brett from FBA Excel, and this is gonna be a Keyword Dominator Pro tutorial from how to set it up all the way to making a listing. So I wanna kinda of show you uh, how I use the tool and just some of the best practices that um, I've learned just in working with other sellers. And I'm gonna to try to answer some of the common questions as well with this video. So um, after you make your copy of Keyword Dominator Pro from the members area, you will need to follow some onboarding instructions that'll just be here on the settings tab. Can't promise you they'll look identical to this depending on when you're watching this video, but uh, it'll just be kind of step one, step two, step three type of deal, and it should make logical sense. So uh, this first one is you have to authorize the permissions to the sheet, and you only have to do this one time, so there'll be a mechanism to do this. In this case, it's just this button here. So you click that, it says authorization required, hit continue. And one thing I'll recommend to you at this point is make sure you have like a brand new Google Drive account and that'll just be uh, pretty much empty to start with and you can just use that then for all your FBA Excel stuff and kind of then keep it separate from any of your personal uh, Google Drive stuff because we do need access to some of the folders and whatnot to talk back and forth between Keyword Dominator and, and Google Drive. So um, it just I think it's a little bit better if you have kind of just a, a plain blank one from the get-go. So that's what you would do. You'd set that up before you uh, even came into the sheet. And then once you're here, it'll have that email here. You just click that and then you just hit advanced, scroll down, hit go to keyword dominator. And then that verifies the, uh, or grants access to all the scripts and automation, hit allow. All right, and then the next step is you're gonna to want to enable this menu if it doesn't come up automatically. I've added a kind of auto populate the menu after you authorize, but some users I've seen have just had weird issues where they can't get the menu to show up. So that's what this button's for. You can just click that once and it'll show up. And if you ever have issues with the menu, just come back here and you'll click this. You won't need to go back through the one-time authorization anymore after you do it the first time. So next step is you do need to plug in your FBA Excel login and password. So you just get that when you sign up for the website. All right, and then if you ever have issues in the future as far as authorization and you're working back and forth with likely me and support, you can always come up here and this authorize account button will be uh, will be there or there'll be some form or fashion of that that you can come up and click and the idea is it's just going and verifying your uh, account is in good standing and then you, you should have some sort of notification on what account you're, you're uh, signed up for so that's all that does all right and then from there if you want to run the PPC dominator with keyword dominator you do need to go and make a Google Drive folder so uh, you can just go anywhere in Google Drive, right click and click PPC Dominator Upload or something like that. Hit create and then you'll just double click there. Copy that and then you can just paste it. Control Shift V, paste values in Google Sheets. That's pretty handy. This country here, this just toggles the images that show up on the uh, keyword tab. So most of the time it'll probably be USA, I would assume. And if your country's not there, message support and all, I'm kind of working on those as a uh, as needed basis. So, all right. So now the main thing is actually going and researching your uh, your product for the listing that you want to make and kind of do the keyword research on. So uh, with that, I'll hop over to Amazon and I kind of picked these wooden spoons as just a uh, pretty bad demo to do, but uh, as far as finding the top 10, uh, what you'd want to do is go over to uh, Amazon under the all, make sure you're not filtered in a, a subcategory and just type in the main keyword. <clears throat> and then you can either, I don't have Helium 10 installed here, but uh, I think this part's pretty self-explanatory. You will uh, either go to like the best sellers for this product or the main keyword and use Helium 10 to sort by highest revenue is a good way to do it. You're just looking for the top 10 best selling products that are likely uh, well optimized for keywords. And once you have that 
top 10 list, then you're good to go. So I like to just save that in a spreadsheet. And Adam's got a good video on a, an example he did with this, so I'm not going to go into uh, a lot of detail there. But uh, once you have the top 10 ASINs, then you're good to kind of get started with the Keyword Dominator research. So I'm just going to hop back into Keyword Dominator. And let's assume I know my 10 ASINs. So now what we can do is just come up and uh, click this Download Reports button. And this is going to open us up into the Amazon Seller Central pages that we need to download specific reports. It'll open us to Brand Analytics, Helium 10, and then the Opportunity Explorer, the, the new Amazon tool there. So, All right, so going back to the reports, we actually are going to need the summary version of, you can do like last 30 days, last 60 days, whatever range you want to use. I'd recommend using the same span. I like to just use 30 days. So. Summary version, 30 days of the search term report. Summary version, 30 days of the um, advertised products report, which is right here. And then summary report, last 30 days of the search term impression share report, which is one up right here. So if you don't know how to create those, you just go to create report. And search term is right there. So we're already on summary last 30 days. So that's our search term one. The product advertising one is right here under advertised products. And then the search term impression share is right there. So that's the only field you need, need to change. And then if you set it up like I have it where uh, I guess you just click now when you originally set it up. But then this dashboard here, anytime you want to redo it, you can just go to let me make sure I got the right one. Yeah, so that's for the search term when you go and click run report. And then you just click on this little icon once it's done. It'll tell you the last run date and it just needs to say today. And then you click on this little icon and save it to your Google Drive folder for the account you set up. And you're good to go after you have those three reports in your Google Drive folder. All right, so I've got some test ones already saved and I'll show you that here in a few minutes. But um, just know that this is kind of the first report you'd want to pull. The brand analytics, I'll maybe splice in part of Adam's video in this one where he uh, goes over how to scrape using the ASIN grabber from Helium 10 off of your uh, search pages. And you can just grab essentially a bunch of related ASINs and plug them into brand analytics. And you actually uh, plug them in right here. And then you choose like, quarterly or monthly are usually good. I usually pick the one that gives me the most results. And then you'll just go up and hit download and you wanna make sure you do CSV. And then you'll just save that file as well to Google Drive and I just like to call it like brand analytics. So once you're done with those two, then you're gonna hop over to Cerebro and we're gonna take our top 10 ASINs that we found from Amazon and just plug them right into here. I've already actually got one done here. so. Um, you can see I just pasted in 10 spoons. And then what you want to do that's pretty critical is down here in the search volume, change that to either like 300 or 500 for most niches, usually works well. Um, Adam changes this to one, I keep it at two. And then I change this to organic, hit apply. You can see I'm at 2,300 uh, or yeah, 2,369. That's that's good enough. Or you could drop it down a little more. The key thing is you're going to want to export this as a CSV file. Don't use Excel. All right. So once you have that, you've got pretty much all of the reports, with the exception of the opportunity finder. So let's do that real quick. So let's just type in wooden spoons and let go. And I like to pick a few of the niches if they're related. So like this one, I'll just right click, open in a new tab. This one here, small wooden spoons, open in a new tab. You, you can just click one of the three here and it'll take you to the same place. These other ones aren't quite as uh, applicable. You'll wanna go back before you uh, download the data for this and actually just hop up here, go to Chrome extensions, uh, Opportunity Explorer table data. Chrome extension, this is gonna take you to the uh, location. You just wanna make sure you, you're using uh, Google Chrome with this and you'll just install this to your Chrome browser. And then once you have that, you can go into these um, pages here. And I have noticed that if you uh, 
uh, like refresh the page and then your next click is to save the table of data that we need to save, then it'll work. But uh, some, some people have had issues with going to these pages and I think they're maybe clicking around, clicking filter, stuff like that. And then they try to copy and paste the data and it'll paste in weird sometimes. So just kind of keep that in mind and watch when I do it and kind of what the columns look like. The other thing I've noticed is some of the niches have search volume over the past 360 days. So if they have that in your niche you're researching, you're going to want to, once you paste the data and actually delete that 360 uh, day search volume so it's just the past 90 days because that's all we've accounted for right now and then um, if there is any extra columns you're going to want to just make sure they match what I'm showing you here in this video so the process for copying the opportunity finder explorer data is just right click hit HTML table scraper which is the extension we just downloaded you're going to copy it to clipboard and then you're just going to hop back into keyword dominator and go to opportunity explorer and then control shift V paste that data and you can see it goes over to column G okay then you can do it for however many tabs you have open just click once and copy to clipboard and then you'll just append it right there control shift V you don't need to worry about deleting that row there one step you can do here is if you're looking down through and there's non-relevant terms go ahead and just delete those at this stage and that way they won't get imported so all right, up to this point, we've, we're done with that, we're done with that, uh, we're done with that. That was the blank helium 10, we're done with that. All right, so now we just need to import our files and it's important that you import them exactly like I'm showing you here. Uh, for example, if you like insert a sheet, when I say to um, insert the data at the selected cell, then it'll mess things up. So it is kind of critical in order of operations and just how to import the data that you do it right. So uh, first one is the Cerebro data. So you just come up and after it clears out, it's going to actually put you into the cell that uh, that you actually need to insert the data in for the next run. So as long as you don't go clicking around, it should be where you need to be. But Cerebro is cell A1. You'll just go file, import. All right, and then I've got some dummy data here for Cerebro Wood Spoon. So you just click on that and you can click replace data at selected cell for this one, hit import data. All right, and then for brand analytics, same deal, just go file, import, Training files and brain analytics. All right. Search term impression share report is same deal. Place data at selected cell, click import. And we've already got our opportunity explorer data in there. The other ones we need to import are our um, search term and advertised products report. So those are actually Excel files. So those are going to be insert sheet. So just go to import, find your search term report, which is right here. And you're going to double click on that and do insert new sheet. Instead of the insert at selected cell, it's insert new sheet, import data. All right, and when that imports, it should read this exact text here from the um, or from the search term report. So just uh, that should be the same, and then you import your product advertising report, and we should be good to go. All right, and then again, just make sure that your Advertise product advertising report, your search term report, and your search term impression share report are over the same date range span. Don't pick one like seven days and then the other 30 days because that won't, uh, the, the data won't jive. So uh, this one's the product advertising report. So just double click, insert new sheet, import data. You don't have to have your PPC reports, so you could just do your Cerebro report and your Brain Analytics report, and Opportunity Explorer, and just not mess with these. But um, it is good, I think, especially if you've been running PPC campaigns and you've got an established listing to kind of get an assessment. So that's kind of the intent of it. So, 
All right, so once you're ready to run the data, one suggestion I would give you that not many people know about is you can go up to File, uh, Version History, Name Current Version, and just call this like um, Run One or uh, Imported Data or however, however you wanna come up with a naming scheme, but you can always revert back in your version history to any uh, named version that you make. So I can uh, run this all the way through and if I wanna get back to this exact state, I can just do that by going to File, Version History, and then you click See Version History and it'll give you options to go back. Uh, so you can also create one of those version histories for a completely blank copy of this and almost treat it like a template and I think you get about 30 days worth of saved version history so uh, there's a couple different options for clearing out the tool after we're done I'll show you how to use the scripts to do it but the easiest way is if you just make a duplicate copy from the members area of the tool and then you can rename it and then you can always just do file make a copy and just keep doing that for each of your products is kind of how I do it but um, there's also a script in here. It, it's segmented out into four steps, though, just because the Keyword Dominator is getting pretty powerful and bigger, so we have to kind of do that to make it more efficient. But anyway, all right, so here is the sequence of actually importing the data. All you're going to do is once you've got all the correct reports in there, go up to Keyword Dominator menu and click Sync New Data. You're gonna get this prompt, and once you hit yes, then it's actually gonna start bringing in all the data. So here's the, the point where I go and actually grab my ASIN that is going to be the one I'm gonna make my listing for. Um, so I just go over to Helium 10, and it's usually either the first or the last. So I'm just gonna copy that guy. And then once you hit yes, you're gonna see the data is gonna start importing. All right, and when it asks you for the ASIN, actually this is not the one that's mine. Mine's already in there, so um, it's actually asking for the first one there. There's always one that's not in there, and it's the first one that you paste in. So just paste that guy there, and then that'll show up here and run all the calculations. And you can just hit OK. All right, so it's going to, after you hit OK, actually dump in your initial target keyword list just based on the uh, score threshold, score min, and alpha threshold. Um, once this initial target list is built, then the sequence of operations I like to do is pick an alpha ASIN. So I like to basically just follow this sequence here. I'm gonna pick an alpha ASIN or multiple alpha ASINs. I'm going to add my brand analytics or any of these over here on the left that are relevant. And then I'll add the opportunity explorer terms and then I'll paste in my ASIN, alpha ASIN one and alpha ASIN two, and then let the kind of the data populate and then I can look at my PPC results. Uh, so let's say Alpha ASIN is just this one here. So you'll just come up here and click Alpha ASINs and hit yes. And this will just take a second and then you'll see in Google Sheets, anytime you have this running script, you don't wanna be clicking around doing a bunch of stuff. Um, you wanna wait for it to say finished and you'll notice like there's an ASIN that just popped up there and you'll see it, it'll resort here in just a second. You just kinda of wanna let it finish. And this darker green means that the alpha ASIN took credit for those keywords because they weren't already um, initially on there. The way I actually use this, this is really bad dummy data that I imported, but I actually just select all of them, all the alpha ASINs, because I wanna know every keyword that all of my competitors are in the top 10 for, and that's a really quick way to do it if you have this set at 10 over here for the alpha threshold. So I select all of them, import all the alpha ASINs right at right uh, at that step two, and then I've got them all in my, in my target keyword list at this point. All right, so the next step is you're gonna want to scroll over, and one other thing you can do is decrease the resolution, and sometimes you'll get like weird lines that'll show up on your Google Sheets. For some reason, it's due to conditional formatting, but usually if you change it to like 95 or a, a slightly lower resolution, those lines will go away, and you can obviously see everything a lot better. So one of the probably biggest issues that people are having is they're not able to find the brand analytics and I never really explained that very well. So basically these pluses up here, you can collapse and expand different groups. And we've got some columns hidden just because it makes things a little bit 
uh, kind of busy to look at, but the brand analytics are under this column BH. You just need to click that plus sign and magically all the brand analytics that we had pasted in are now there. So the way I like to paste these over are I don't like to actually filter because it hides rows and it kind of boogers up some of the uh, you know formatting and column alignment. So what you can do is just click on this table button and that's going to select your brand analytics table. And then you can just sort your table here by color and I just do white and then you'll want to go through and just pick out any of the ones that are relevant and just you can check them or if they're all relevant you can check the top one and just drag down like that green means it's already on your target list so you don't need to fool with it and one other new feature we added is that you can actually hover over like multiple targets and just say you don't know what one of them is you can do one at a time or you can do multiple by highlighting it like that right clicking and clicking uh, they moved it on me. I know a shortcut is Alt Enter, so you hit Alt Enter, and then all of those tabs will show up, and that'll just take you to the Amazon search page, and you can just make sure it's relevant for your product. All right, so once you've selected those, then I also go over here, and I like to uh, click this table here and actually sort this by search volume just to get all the highest search volume at the top. You can do that by clicking Z to A. And then if I've got any really high search volume that hasn't been added because nobody's ranking well for but it is highly relevant then I'll go ahead and check those as well. And I'm just randomly clicking stuff right now. But um, And then once you're satisfied with that it's just going to be uh, step three, add manual keywords, and then same deal, you're going to want to wait for the script to finish, and you'll get the finished script notification when it's done. So once we got that, you'll notice these also turn green, and your brain analytics turn green as well. So I like to just collapse that back when I'm done there. All right, so after we've added the brain analytics in our uh, manual terms that we want, I like to go back over to this table and make sure that it's selected and if you've added any with a score of zero, it's actually going to cause an issue um, on the next step. So uh, what you can do is just sort this like A to Z and then change these to like a score of one. It just means nobody was ranking well for them, but we, uh, we added them manually because we thought they were relevant. Uh, but make sure those are have a value and they're not zero and then we can go ahead and add our opportunity explorer terms so if you recall we've already kind of cleaned out that list uh, back when we pasted in the data if, if they weren't relevant so just hit step four there and then that's going to append those terms and then resort them here in our target list so we've then got pretty much every keyword we would want in our list and you can see it actually recalculates our search volume and it's going to paste in some data there uh, if it's in the opportunity explorer only is, is how you know that that kind of keyword came from there if there's data over here so um, after that scripts done then you're pretty much done with actually getting all of the keywords in one place you can see down here if there's an ASIN that means it came from an alpha ASIN if it's brain analytics came from obviously brain analytics there won't be search volume if your uh, brain analytics term was not in the Cerebro term because it doesn't have search volume to look up. Opportunity Explorer, that came from obviously the Opportunity Explorer. All right, so the next step that I do is I'm going to go grab my ASIN. So if we say that this is our ASIN here, we'll just uh, Control Shift V, paste it there. This is kind of the main alpha ASIN, so I'll put him there. And then we'll just make one up and say this guy's the next best and paste that there. And then you just got to give it a second to let the data populate. Uh, one of the new features we added is anything in the top 10 from either your product or the two alpha ASINs are going to show up here in blue. And I'll show you kind of how I use that here in just a second. Uh, but on to the PPC metrics, and this kind of seems where most of the confusion lies, and I'll try to do my best to explain what's going on here. But um, effectively, all we care about is our ASIN when we're talking about the PPC, and we've added our search term report, we've added our product advertising report, and we've added our search term impression share report. So uh, to reveal the PPC data, you just click this little tab above AG, and if you have your PPC campaign set up in single SKU campaigns, 
then you should see data if you have gotten conversions and hopefully orders. Here you can see this dummy data is pretty rough. It looks like I've only got a few with conversions, but what I like to do just real quick when I'm analyzing the PPC data is click on orders, just click Z to A, and then you can see I've only got a couple here with actual results, but uh, let me make this a little smaller. But the idea here is you kind of have all your target uh, keywords in one place you've got your PPC data in, in one place and hopefully you know if you obviously I can be using dummy data so hopefully your data looks a lot better than this and you'll be able to just assess what's converting the best and just get a really good bird's eye view of everything so after that what I like to do is assign priorities on kind of my main target keywords I want to start optimizing my listing or create new can PPC campaigns for and actually what I do I'm sorry I start off with, with just clicking this button here and that's going to sort by search volume and it's got the brand analytics at the top anything over a thousand search volume I'll mark a one and then I'll come back later and take it away if it's not relevant so I'm just going to go down and stop there and then what I like to do is go A to Z on my top two competitors and if they have some additional terms I will you know this guy's got a bunch so I'll go top 10 with that and then same deal with this guy uh, top 10 there so that's kind of my initial sweep and then I'll click this button again and what this does it actually looks at your priority column and your search volume column and it's going to kind of prioritize a sort based on that um, so you can see uh, it's got search volume first and then it actually sorts by your priority all right so the idea here is you're just going to go through, uh, you're just going to go through very carefully and look and, and look at relevance and try to assign. I like to do like ones, twos, and threes, and then maybe branded like B for branded, and just kind of create your own scheme there to where you can very easily then kick the top terms that you want to make sure you're optimized in your listing for to the top of the list. All right, and in addition to the priority column, you can also identify the rank targets. And this column is applicable for the metrics tool or the uh, PPC dominator tool. So you can just kind of go through and number the ones through, I like to do either like 15 to 25, but we'll just do six for now. All right, and then once you've gotten this list where you want it, you can obviously collapse that. There's also some additional fields here from Helium 10 that you can use if you want. Um, but what we're gonna do now is actually use the listing wizard, and I'm just gonna plug in some dummy data for that example. But you'll just right click and create a duplicate tab when you're ready to use the listing wizard. And I like to put these side by side, and I've just, basically taking an Amazon listing for a wooden spoon and plugged in their title and bullets. I would not recommend doing that to start out with your own listing because you can get in trouble for copywriting if you just copy even a little bit of somebody's listing. So I would start from scratch, but for the sake of this example, I'm just doing it to illustrate kind of how the two, uh, the listing wizard and the target keyword list tie together. Basically the color scheme is in order of precedence as you see here so titles green and you see it's green showing up there uh, then you've got your bullets down there in red don't have anything plugged in for the subject matter or you could consider uh, the, you know your EBC metadata it's kind of the I would say least order of precedence I'd put description maybe even a little bit ahead of that hard to say there's a lot of I know conspiracy theories or whatever but at any rate, the heavy hitter is your search terms, and we've got a really good script down here to help you really rank for as many terms as you can't stuff into your title and bullets. And the way it works is it kind of looks at what's already in your bullets and title and then uses permutations for single keywords and then all the other keywords that you've already addressed and gives you kind of the maximum bang for your buck. So. Uh, without too much kind of going into everything, you need to just know that um, to sort by color, and you can just do white, and that's going to kick everything else up to the top. And if you've already done this sort here, you you are already by search volume and your priority, so uh, it kind of automatically puts it in the order you would want. And what you do is 
um, I said sort, I meant filter, sorry. So it filtered out all the colored keywords. And before you get to this stage, obviously you'd go through and go from top to bottom and try to get in there as many of them that made sense without keyword stuffing as you can. Um, and then this is kind of the step two, but uh, you'd sort out all the colors and then um, I like to just kind of see how many I can get at first. I may not be able to get all of them, but copy that list then and you're gonna head over here and just go down to more phrases to rank. Then you'll paste those in, control shift V. If they're in the Cerebro data over here, then you'll actually get the search volume as well, which is handy. All right, and then what you wanna do is, without going into too much confusing explanation, just come up and hit Listing Wizard Process Phrase List. This is gonna take this master list and just kinda of concatenate all the words and put a space in between each one of them. So that's uh, 300 or 3,248 characters there. And what we're going to do is pretend for a second that we could have that many characters in our search terms. I know we can't, but we'll just copy that. We're going to come up here, Control Shift V. We're going to paste that. And you see it just um, paste it in just like it was down there. But now you have this box here, and you can see it's 666 characters. So it condensed it down quite a bit. And all that did, it just looked and said, okay, if I've already got one of these words in my bullets or my title, then I'm gonna remove it. And now if we take this list and override it, we're a lot closer to where we need to be. And granted, we need to we need to still cut this down by like a third, but now we can go in one by one. And if you actually start from the back and go to the front, you'll be able to take out words that just don't make sense. And once you're at 250, then you're good to go. The thing I like to do after that is um, actually go back and put in phrase form for you know my top keywords that I weren't it wasn't able to and actually I have those filtered out right now so I just go back to here filter by color click none so basically the ones that I wasn't able to get into my title or my bullets I'll put those back in phrase form and start with uh, actually here's where I go to my description and I try to f craft a description with some of these in there and then I'll do the blue last and again in, in phrase form for those as well. All right guys, and then one last thing I wanted to show you is the clear scripts. And again, you could just make a template version of this and it would be a lot faster than what I'm about to show you. But another option is you can click uh, step one and it's just gonna walk you through like a little wizard here. So reset phase one, hit yes, and it'll start removing some of the data. We had to break it up into four stages just cause it was getting so big. Uh, but once you get that finished script, then you can just go up to clear data, step two, hit yes. And I won't bore you. You basically just go through the other two steps and then you are golden to kind of start from scratch. All right. So again, hopefully this video clears up some of the questions and gives you an idea of kind of what I do in my SOP and you guys can hopefully use this to help improve your business. If you don't have Keyword Dominator Pro and especially the listing wizard is one of the really nice features that I haven't really talked about and that uh, that uh, more phrases to rank script is incredibly powerful. I'd say one of the most important buttons in my whole business that um, I hit. If you guys don't have this right now and you want to get it, it's only $37 one time cost over on the website, or I've got a new uh, 1997 per month plan that you also get the PPC Dominator. So if you haven't checked that out, there'll be some videos on the YouTube channel and on the website there. And you also get the Flex Campaign Builder with that monthly subscription. So a really low fee and you get quite a bit of value and bang for your buck. So if you guys are interested in any of that, head over to the website, check it out, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks.